Welcome into After Carmen, 11 Warriors official post-game show here from Spartan Stadium where uh, it's been raining off and on a little bit. So we're uh, here indoors in the friendly confines of the press box where we just watched Ohio State earn a 38-7 win in its Big Ten opener. And Andy, we're going to sound like a broken record because we've started a lot of our videos over the course of this year this way, but we're going to do it again. Jeremiah Smith. Wow. Uh, yeah, not sure I've ever seen two catches that amazing in such quick succession like that. Ohio State, you know, this was a weird game, especially in the beginning. It, a lot of sloppiness. Michigan State went on some drives but turned the ball over and end up scoring their only touchdown, their only points of the game off of a really bad interception by Will Howard. But it's only 17-7, and Ohio State is going to give the ball to Michigan State to start the third quarter. And you go into this two-minute drill, and Jeremiah Smith makes a leaping grab over two defenders with one hand that he kind of bobbles and then secures along the sideline to set Ohio State up uh, down in the red zone. Will Howard gets injured, and so Devin Brown comes into the game for a play and throws one up the sideline, and Jeremiah reaches out and makes a one-handed grab that, frankly, 99% of receivers, I don't think you can get a hand on that ball. Jeremiah Smith catches that ball. And that is, um, we're watching something special here, Dan. We, we said that this was a talent unlike any receiver possibly we've ever seen in the past, you know, all the reports. He continues to do things that Ohio State freshmen have never done before. Did it in the offseason, being named an Iron Buckeye, losing his black stripe earlier than anyone else ever has. And all the hype that he had coming into this year, he is somehow exceeding it. I'm ready to say it. Jeremiah Smith is Ohio State's best player. That's a bold statement with all the talent on his team. But the guy is just special. I mean, he does things. But like you said, I mean, even the likes of what we've seen here at Ohio State in the past several years with Marvin Harrison Jr., with Chris Olave, with Garrett Wilson, with Jackson Smith and Jigba, Mecca Buka, who's still playing for the team, you name it, Ohio State has had an incredible run at wide receiver. But, but this guy, he's had six touchdowns in four games as a Buckeye. He's already tied Garrett Wilson for the third most touchdowns ever by a freshman at Ohio State. I mean, he's going to, uh, barring you know injury or, or something unforeseen happening, Jeremiah Smith is going to obliterate the freshman records here at Ohio State. You know, you're going to get to watch this guy play for two more years as a Buckeye. So it is truly amazing what we are seeing so far from Jeremiah Smith. It is clear that he is a special, special talent. And somehow, I mean, I thought it was going to be almost impossible for this guy to exceed the hype that he came into this season with and somehow he's doing it so uh, an amazing performance by jeremiah smith once again tonight i think he was certainly the star of the show here in east lansing to be clear to your earlier point will howard said he just had the wind knocked out of him he's yeah. fine he was able to come back in second half of the game i think overall a good game for will howard had the one baffling interception there in the first half that set up a touchdown for Michigan State allowed Michigan State to make it a 10-7 game but really from there Ohio State took over the game definitely not the best start to the game for the defense they allowed Michigan State to drive into deep Ohio State territory on each of their first four possessions but one of those started at the 12 because of that aforementioned Will Howard interception but you know really if Ohio State doesn't force a couple turnovers in the red zone this maybe is a very different game. Like, but, but it, you have to give Ohio State credit for making the plays on the ball to force those fumbles to get the ball back. At the same time, it's clear that this defense has some things to work on because this is now two weeks in a row that we've seen Ohio State's defense start slow out of the gates. And against a better opponent, say Oregon in two weeks, they might not be able to get away with that. Yeah, I, I think what you need more out of this defense, for me, it was... The secondary looked pretty strong tonight, I thought, uh, for the most part. Caleb Downs all over the field making plays. You had Jordan Hancock had a huge forced fumble, made a couple nice plays elsewhere uh, on, on defense. Denzel Burke comes away with his second interception of the year. Allowed one or two catches, but really tight coverage on those plays. Maybe a few lapses from Davis and Igbenosin, but I think where my issues start are with the linebackers tonight. Uh, again, just like Marshall did, a lot of quick passes over the middle were successful for Michigan State. Man coverage-wise, it didn't seem like Sonny Styles was able to hold up on some assignments with tight ends. Uh, with guys over the middle of the field. Cody Simon, too, in, the, in some of those areas. And not to single guys out, it's just that the pass coverage, I think, needs to improve from this linebacker core. And also some, like, just 
you can tell Sonny's a little out of position and still adjusting to linebacker. I think maybe we expect we heard what was being said about him in in the fall and how quickly he overtook that starting will job and thought it he was going to be transitioning very smoothly very quickly from safety i think you know this is still a guy that was playing safety last year he he looks like a guy who played safety last year, year sometimes and he he's got some uh, wrinkles to work out in his game there the first half i feel like ohio state didn't get as much pressure as it needed to on the quarterback. Much better job of that in the second half. Uh, the defensive line play, again, I think missed Tyleek Williams in there a little bit in parts. But still, I, I think overall the defensive line made some nice plays in this game. Jack Sawyer really solid against the run. Um, could have used a little more pass rush. Maybe Jack, JT got a sack today. Uh, you got some good interior things done from other guys. I, I think there was some... It was kind of there. There was a mixed bag on the defensive line. I think the linebackers have some issues to address, though, as the season moves forward. But hey, you know it's uh, overall a thirty-eight to seven win. It, you can't complain too much about it, especially with how they came out and played the second half. Yeah, I mean, the end of the day, they forced three turnovers, gave up one touchdown. Yeah, it's a successful day. So yes, yes. there's definitely some things going off these last two games that the defense needs to clean up, but. At the end of the day, uh, still an excellent performance. Uh, like I said, we've seen two games in a row now, a slow start in the first half, defense really turn it on in the second half. That That's a promising sign. It's just got to got to start out a little stronger out of the gates because, again, against an opponent like in Oregon in a couple of weeks, that might come back to bite you if you start the game out slowly on defense. we got to give Devin Brown a little love here today because Devin, Devin Brown came into the game, as you mentioned, for Will Howard, throws a touchdown on his First pass in the game, uh, Will Howard said after the game that he was uh, you know, really proud of Devin for the way that he stepped up in that moment, uh, making that throw. And then you mentioned Caleb Downs. You know, I, I had kind of said it you know, this week. I kind of was waiting to see Caleb have that game where you just really notice him, where he really makes his mark and looks like that All-American that we know he can be. And I think tonight was that night. You could just see it. I think somebody in our Slack, I think, made the comment during the game of one of the tackles Caleb made. And he said, you could tell that was Caleb before I even saw his number. Because he just moves to the ball in a different way. He, he it, you know, he's been described as like a missile. Or it's like when he see, you know, that see ball, get ball, like when he makes a read on a play, he can just really zoom in downhill and make, make a great tackle. And so I think tonight was the night for me where Caleb Downs really jumped off the page as the best player on that Ohio State defense. And that's why we're talking about the defense. Like, you know, this is still a defense, even with the uneven starts for the last couple of weeks. I still believe this can be the best defense in the country. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know, if, if there's so much talent on this defense, when it's all flowing together the way it's supposed to, it looks really, really good. So there's definitely some kinks to work through. Maybe things haven't looked quite as dominant the last couple of weeks as we expected, but still, they're getting great results. Yeah, and it's it's going to be it's said all the time about Ohio State, but you get everybody's best shot week in and week out. Michigan State came into this game with the best game plan they could possibly draw up, uh, and really, I think wanted to do as teams are going to throw as many curveballs as they can when they play Ohio State. I think there were some schematic things it seems like that surprised the Buckeyes last week with Marshall. Maybe that happened again this week. I'm not in those game plan meetings, of course, but this is what happens, I think, when you're Ohio State. You get teams' best shots, and sometimes things look a little fuzzy because maybe you get some things you weren't expecting, some looks that are different. Um, but Again, really good response from the defense, and, and you're picking these nits because, again, this is a team that you expect to contend for a national title, and they looked like a national title contender tonight, I think, overall. Um, but just, again, those are the little things you have to work out to get to that level. I think we haven't really talked about the run game as much. I, I do think it still looked pretty good tonight. They started out a little slow, had a few runs that weren't as productive in the early going, but once it found its footing again, they were able to chunk the defense consistently and got to see Jeremiah Smith mix in in that game, too. A very nice play call on an end around. Uh, just fake the handoff to Quinshawn, pitch it back to Jeremiah Smith, and he dashes 19 yards to the house. So that was a lot of more fun schematic wrinkles from Chip Kelly. Um, I There was a zone read call I really liked down near the goal line that Will Howard scored on. Um, yeah, it was, it was Will Howard scored on there. 
uh, on a third down. Uh, and fourth downs, man. This offense converted three fourth downs tonight, I believe it was. Fourth and one, fourth and th- goal at the three, and then a fourth and, what, five, I believe it was. Yep. So there was... Uh, this is a team that was that was, showed itself willing to take those shots and those risks, and there were some calls where, you know, um, even I, compared to what you did last year, when you had some fourth downs where you felt maybe Ohio State was being a little too conservative, the foot was completely on the gas pedal tonight. And that's a difference this year, too, I think, with this offense is they've shown these first four games, it was different against non-conference opponents. Doing it on the road in a Big Ten game is different. They've this is a team that's going to go for it on fourth down more often, I think. You know, I'll be honest. I mean, sitting there next to you in a press box, the first fourth down, I'm like, I don't know about this. I mean, the offense wasn't really doing a whole lot on the ground at that point. They're only up three nothing. And I'm like, eh, maybe I'd take the points there. They score a touchdown on a pass to G. Scott. Second time, they go for it from, I think, their own 45-yard line or yeah. something like that. I'm yeah. thinking, eh, it's still a close game. You sure you want to go for it there? It ends up working out. And so... Uh, three for three on fourth downs with two touchdowns. Uh, that's a pretty good night. Certainly, I think situational football is the area yeah. where you could say Ohio State really won this game. The reason why Ohio State won this game 38-7 was situational football. Converting on those fourth downs, you know, stopping Michigan State when Michigan State went forward on fourth down, forcing three turnovers and only having one. Those are the areas that really allowed Ohio State to win this game and start off its Big Ten season on the right foot. Once again, a 38 to seven victory for the Buckeyes. Big 10 play will continue next week back in Columbus at Ohio Stadium when the Buckeyes play Iowa, 3.30 p.m. CBS televising that game. We'll be there back in the shoe to cover that one for you. We hope you join us again next week on After Carmen.